For tree surveys, there's a GIS approach that links back to CERVE that is different from the hard-coded approach of coding tree type, the diameter of the trunk, and the radius of the canopy as an option. Um, this method involves using GIS attributes that are set up in CERVE and then um, are, are used to um, plot uh, the trees back in the Carlson Survey module. Now if you go into Survey, Draw Field to Finish, and click on the Tree Survey button, you have this 1, 2, 3, 4th tab, GIS Attributes, where if you set up the attributes in CE to match those shown here, Trunk, Drip, and Tag, and you can have any one of or more of these three options, then they will be utilized to create tree surveys uh, back in the CAD package. So I'm going to hit OK, cancel out, and go into Serve CE over here. And I'm going to do Store Points. Now before I do Store Points, I'm going to show how this is set up. Go to File, Feature Code List, and I've got this one tree specified, a gum tree. I hit Edit, and the GIS attributes are set up with the Edit Feature option. So notice I have matched the exact attribute names in the GIS tab of the Tree Survey feature back in Carlson Survey. I'm even going to add one more. We'll add the actual tag. Um, and then we'll prompt Tree ID. Tree ID. And it'll be, it can be alphanumeric, so it can be a um, character. And we'll go ahead and save that. And so I have all three in this case defined. Let's save this. And gum has been redefined there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and survey by using the command survey store points. You can see I even have my uh, subdivision, which appears over to the left on the same uh, position here. Um, and we'll head up and hit our first point. Um, point number 9 will be gum. It's a gum tree. Now watch how it kicks in to the prompts. So this is uh, beneficial for field crews who you uh, don't want to have them memorize a hard-coded approach to tree surveys, but get prompted with these GIS attributes. So I'll say the diameter here is 24. Drip line is 18. It's kind of a tall, narrow. And the tree ID will be uh, T R to be different, and I'll say 51. Store, and then we'll continue on to point uh, 10. Okay, and we'll hit enter. We'll just do two of these trees. This one will be 18 inches, uh, a bigger drip line of 24, and a tree ID of TR52, and store. Okay, so I have these two trees defined here, and it's in this file subdiv, and I will go to exit and leave serve CE altogether. So this is illustrating the link of the two packages. Now, under points, I will set my coordinate file to a different file altogether. I'll go to browse and and track down that file used by serve CE. I think it was in serve CE demo data. And here We'll look for the subdiv, CRD, hit open, and double check the point list. We'll do a range, all, and we'll display these points, and you'll see that we do have two gum trees in, in uh, 9 and 10. 
All right. Next, we'll go to survey and do the field to finish on this. We're going to use um, the test5 field to finish file. Let's edit our co codes and be sure we have a gum tree. And we don't, so we'll add one. And we'll illustrate the entire process here. We're going to put a gum as the code. Full description will be gum tree. And description, um, we'll shorten it there. We will put it on the layer tree and make it a tree type feature so it responds to the tree survey button. Symbol, let's pick a distinct one. Let's go to the set symbol option, pick trees, and find one that looks distinct and interesting, and we'll choose tree 13 and hit OK. So that accomplished everything we need to do on the, on the gum tree. We'll save it and exit back out. Go to the tree survey button. Notice that we've matched the, these items back in serve CE, but we're going to do something different in label because we have a tag that we want to label. And the tag will label first. And then we'll label the trunk size second, the tree type or code description third, and the drip radius fourth. And we've specified um, the suffixes to use for the trunk size, diameter, and a drip line radius. So we hit OK. So that's all set up. And we're good to plot. So we hit OK. And we'll just do 9 and 10. 9 comma 10 as the two points to, to plot out here using test 5. And uh, we'll hit OK. Do you want to do them in a table? We'll say no. And you can see let's erase some of the other items that, that are in the way here. And you can see we've got the, the proper coating, TR51, 24 inch gum, 18 foot drip radius. Um, so it, it plotted uh, just as it should and the canopy is larger with the 24 foot drip radius than it is with the 18 foot drip radius. Uh, we've already covered the uh, discussion of tree surveys in general, but here we've gone into a little more detail on how to apply the, the SURF CE GIS prompting to the plotting of trees and that automation. Let's also witness what this would look like in a uh, classic tree table here. We'll go draw a field to finish, hit OK, and we will say yes to drawing the tree table. Location for the tree table here. And here we got a little bit of a, a duplication because of the, the tag being part of the tree table. So in this case, watch the, the, the difference. We would go to draw field to finish, tree survey, and you don't need to, to, to plot the tag back in the tree table. So you would go over to the label tab and the description setup and turn this to none and renumber these 1, 2, and 3. So specifically for table plotting, you'd want to make this distinct here. Now watch the difference. Hit OK. Yes to the table and location for the table. And you see it's plotted once and it looks good and you still have your uh, IDs plotted by the trees. So that's the GIS prompted method which closely relates to the GIS uh, set up within serve CE.